Hello, and welcome to the Stem Cell Healing Institute podcast. In case you have any questions regarding this program, please write us at info at stemcellhealinginstitute.com. Thank you, and enjoy the podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Stem Cell Healing Institute podcast. We are here with Dr. Sarah Figueredo, who is ready to travel to Guatemala next week. And um, she's in Canada right now. And um, we're going to have a very interesting topic today, which is uh, total body rejuvenation. Um, And this is such an interesting topic because it involves um, almost the whole body, right, doctor? Hello, doctor. How are you? Thank you so much, uh, Louise. It's always a pleasure doing these podcasts with you because you always have very good questions. So so basically, total body rejuvenation can benefit anyone, um, as someone that's perfectly healthy, uh, as well as someone dealing with disease condition. And um, in a nutshell, basically what uh, total body rejuvenation involves are, are stem cells that are applied Uh, intravenously as well as intranasal aspiration to benefit everywhere the blood flows. So all of the organs are bathed with stem cells, the heart, the kidneys, the liver, um, anywhere the blood flows basically as well as uh, and the brain as well as intranasal aspiration which allows the stem cells to get Uh, directly bypassing the blood-brain barrier and into the the brain to benefit any kind of cognitive decline, uh, memory, uh, concentration, focus. And so, and that's why we call it total body rejuvenation because we sort of have a a cognitive revamp as well as a, a peripheral body, the organs, the skin, the hair, and as I, as I said, and I'll reiterate, it's basically everywhere the blood flows. So it's a really nice way of uh, uh, really getting, a, again, a total body sort of complete uh, treatment. And, um, but you mentioned that this is internasal, but uh, um, would it be inter- intravenously? And- uh, intravenous, yes. So IV. So IV, it would be yeah. done intravenously, IV with... Uh, with mannitol to allow the stem cells to also bypass the blood-brain barrier as well as intranasally uh, just so we get the whole body uh, very effectively and so uh, and that's what it involves and sometimes we also uh, if the patient uh, requires we will also do a uh, uh, joint injections as well because the blood flow to the joints is limited to some degree And so uh, if there is a problematic joint, we will include that in the treatment also. But when we say treatment, it involves more than just the stem cells, right, doctor? Yes, that's right, Louise. It involves uh, a very comprehensive treatment package where we do a detox uh, before we start. We call it our total, total body detox and uh, a detoxification and we do with that what's entailed is an intravenous uh, nutritional IV with high dose antioxidants and nutrients to stimulate and jumpstart liver detoxification. We follow that up with uh, four nights of a a natural uh, coffee suppository as well as intramuscular B shots, B, B complex vitamins that is uh, our total detox program so we in- include that as well as oxygen therapy and that can be in the form of hyperbaric oxygen exercise with oxygen on a bicycle for 20 minutes uh, depending on what the patient uh, requires and their limitations so we will also do the oxygen therapy as well as uh uh, in, in depending on the patient, we will also do hormone therapy. And uh, again, that all of these just sort of adjunct the stem cells to uh, prepare the body and also prepare the stem cells for the best possible response to the treatment. Um, and finally, we include uh, a stem cell enhancement formula that involves uh, and uh, which includes 
certain key minerals for the stem cells in the body, as well as key herbs that allow the stem cells to continue to regenerate. Um, and, uh, and we also have the pre-treatment protocol where we make some key dietary changes, nothing that is uh, not sustainable, as well as adding certain key supplements to, uh, to the body and to the diet. Uh, which, uh, again, it prepares the stem cells and the body uh, for the best possible outcomes. I've been meaning to ask you for a long time if these treatments have like a age range or... Um... Very, again, Louise, a very good question. Um, no, in, in, in terms of who can be treated with yeah. stem cells, there's absolutely no uh, limitation on age. We treat, uh, you know, in some cases and in many disease conditions, certain certain con uh, disease conditions, the younger the patient, the better the body response because younger patients are so plastic. Their body is so uh, ready and willing to to heal and to recuperate. So, uh, you know, with children with autism and uh, for other neurodegenerative diseases, the sooner we get them, uh, diabetes, the sooner we, we have the ability to treat them, the better. And, um, and then in terms of older patients, we have treated patients in their 90s uh, with, with very, very good results. So, so that, and it, it, again, it depends on um, the patient's limitations, you know, so um, So that's basically what would limit us in terms of who can be treated with stem cells, physical limitations, um, and uh, mostly some physical limitations. And I know you said it before, but um, um, it's, I think it's important to mention it again. Um, where do we get those stem cells and how do we, um, because there is such a controversy about the stem cells, but it's... it's yes. I think it's good to inform the listeners uh, how we yes. apply the, the where stem we get cells. Yeah, where yes. we get them. How yes. Yeah. yes, absolutely, Louise. So we use um, several different types of stem cells depending on the condition being treated. So we will use autologous stem cells, which are from the patient's own body um, in the form of adipose or fat-derived stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, or uh, bone marrow derived stem cells, depending, again, depending on, on what we're treating, as well as uh, we use endometrial stem cells, which are very, very effective and non-immunogenic, which we get from uh, the uterus of healthy females, young, healthy females. Um, and, and the endometrial stem cells are very unique in that they Uh, again, they're not immunogenic. None of these stem cells are, which means that the body doesn't reject them in any way, uh, whether they're your own stem cells or endometrial stem cells coming from a female and being deployed in a male patient, for instance. There is no rejection whatsoever. And what makes the endometrial stem cells so unique is that they, uh, the body, uh, they respond very well to uh, autoimmune conditions as well as neurodegenerative conditions uh, like uh, multiple sclerosis, autism, Alzheimer's, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and so on and so forth. So, um, And we also use um, umbilical cord derived stem cells. However, we don't use them so much because we find that they they Uh, very much mimic uh, the way that endometrial stem cells as well as bone marrow stem cells respond and, and adipose derived. Uh, but we have the option of either of these. We stay away from 100% uh, embryonic or fetal stem cells because they're such a, they're not considered adult mesenchymal stem cells. They're such a, a primal form of stem cells that Uh, we don't have control as to how much they grow. And so those are what can be, uh, which uh, those are the types of stem cells that can possibly lead to uncontrolled growths and tumors. And uh, we just don't use them at our clinic uh, for safety and ethical reasons. Doctor, if a patient um, decides to come to our clinic, uh, what will be the process, uh, let's say they come from the States or Canada or North America? 
Well, it would be the presence, yes. So we, um, medical tourism and uh, um, coming from foreign countries, uh, patients coming from foreign countries, it is very, very, um, most of our patients are coming from, uh, it's very common, most of our patients do come from foreign countries because these treatments are simply not available in so many jurisdictions in so many parts of the world because of healthcare limitations. And uh, for instance, in the U.S. and Canada, um, FDA and Health Canada limit uh, the kind of stem cell treatment that can be performed. Um, and, and that's because, uh, uh, you know, they don't allow stem cells from any other uh, allogenic, which means from other patients or other donors. It has to all come from within the patient's own body. So in many cases, it just is not effective and stem cells can't be combined with other cofactors or growth factors from the patient's own blood. Just the combination is considered an unapproved drug. And so, so many limitations are placed um, in other jurisdictions that don't allow for the best possible results. And so, uh, when we have patients coming from other parts of the world, here in Guatemala, the the regulations are such that we can do safe and effective treatments without compromising, again, without compromising the patient's safety, um, as, as well as without compromising uh, ethical and moral uh, standards and without breaking any, any uh, regulations, uh, local uh, regulations. So uh, it's a win-win situation, and you know, being being in a place in a, a place in the world where is somewhat of a, set, a destination location, where uh, patients come all the time, uh, and travelers come all the time in order to uh, just explore the the landmarks and the volcanoes and the Mayan ruins and uh, the coffee farms and. Uh, it makes it very desirable, desirable for patients to come. And we can provi uh, provide all the accommodations and everything. Is that correct? We can That's arrange right. that for the patients. That's right. We actually provide accommodation that's included in the treatment. We also have chauffeur service for airport transfers and getting to and from appointments and so on and so forth. And we help arrange uh, airline um, airline. Reservations travel and well. travel, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, doctor, uh, w what would be the best way to contact you directly? Yes, we have emails. You can contact us, listeners, you can contact us through info at stemcellhealinginstitute.com. That's info at stemcellhealinginstitute.com. They can also visit us on our website and fill out contact forms again at stemcellhealinginstitute.com or uh, stemxcure.com, a little bit easier to spell. And uh, they can visit us on Instagram and Facebook and call us directly on WhatsApp. They can message us directly on WhatsApp at plus 502-4220-7297. That's plus 502 Four two two zero seven two nine seven, and they can reach us at our North American phone number also at two zero nine six nine zero seven eight three six two zero nine six nine zero seven eight three six. Excellent, doctor. Um, so when you're gonna be back in Guatemala? I will be there next Wednesday. I'll be back from Canada, seeing okay. patients and visiting family. Excellent. So you enjoyed the last days of your trip in Canada. Um, it was Thanks. nice talking to you, doctor. You have a great day. Thank you. You too, Luis. You have a good one. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.